When work begins, everything is slightly eerie. All that can be heard is this strange chirping. Hundreds of wire cables pulled as taut as possible knock and rub against each other in the wind. A thousand tons of steel are hanging on the cables. A thousand tons which are to be hoisted more than a hundred meters. A spectacular event, but there are only a few spectators on the Egyptian Propylene and Polypropylene Company construction site when the huge C3 splitter is slowly raised into the air. A large area of the site has been cordoned off. Everywhere, work has stopped. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It's Thursday on the site in Port Said. More than 5,000 workers are on their way home after midday prayers. On Friday, the day of rest in the Islamic world, no one will be at work here. The big lift has been scheduled deliberately for that day, just in case something goes wrong, although there's no indication of any risk. The specialist Italian company Fagioli has erected a towering gantry in order to pull the future C3 splitter for the PDH process from the horizontal into the vertical position. A feat involving numerous incalculable factors. For example, the strong wind from the Mediterranean blowing towards the desert, strong enough to buffet even a thousand ton load, as can clearly be seen on the time-lapse sequence. But challenges are nothing new as far as the C3 splitter for the PDH project in Port Said is concerned. Originally, the splitter and a de-ethanizer were to have been completely assembled by the manufacturer in South Korea and pushed on a barge up to the beach near the construction site. However, it was impossible to dig out the required navigation channel as the sea in this area is a designated nature reserve. The C3 splitter is part of the PDH process. Production is due to start here in a few months. 350,000 tonnes of propane will be converted into propylene annually and subsequently processed into polypropylene. Transport of the columns called for a plan B. Flashback. 12 months previously. An excavator opens up a second access in the perimeter wall around the EPPC site. Over the next few days, the de-ethanizer and the C3 splitter are scheduled to arrive in six individual sections, each weighing 250 tons. UDA engineers and specialists from the manufacturer and the transport company discuss the preparation of the foundations. The ship from Korea is already in the harbour. In the middle of the night, the 250-tonne leviathans move through the streets of Port Said. A bridge on the route had previously had to be reinforced. Otherwise, the undertaking runs smoothly. A few months later, the two columns have been welded together. In the background, now weighing 500 tonnes and a little over 50 metres long, is the de-ethanizer. In the foreground, the C3 splitter, weighing a thousand tons and a hundred meters long. Both are still lying on their sides. They'll be equipped with external ladders and platforms and, as far as possible, insulation. Once these jobs have been completed, comes the day of lifting. First, the de-ethanizer. The gantry has been assembled for the first time, but only to half the height required for the C3 splitter. A problem. The special follow-up crane planned for this job can't be shipped in time from a construction site in Europe. The alternative? SPMTs, self-propelled modular transporters. They follow up the de-ethanizer as it's hoisted up the gantry. It takes only a few hours before the first column is in place. A few weeks later, it's the turn of the C3 splitter. Weight, a thousand tons, an enormous load. The gantry is now 130 meters high and precisely balanced. It's held in position by tag lines with a force of 200 bar. I have uh, 200 bar, which is uh, 60 tons. 
For this special lifting operation, tension piles made of reinforced concrete have been poured 60 meters deep into the ground. Shortly before lifting starts, a group of surveyors checks once again that the gantry is perfectly straight. The 750-ton crane is standing by and its hook picks up the foot of the column. Everything has been precisely calculated. Almost everything. These shackles, with which the enormous steel rope is attached to the splitter, will play an important role 12 hours from now. The crane is pushed to its limit as it lifts the splitter. Initially, just a few centimetres. The steel supports, which the column had rested on for months, first have to be cut apart and removed. The Uda engineers in charge organise and supervise the entire operation. Then, finally, the moment arrives. The head of the column is lifted up the gantry. The crane follows centimetre by centimetre. Everything has been precisely planned. Nothing is left to chance. Nico, Nico, mi senti, Nico. Giovanni from Fagioli is in charge. Okay. He issues orders to his crew as the 1,000 ton Leviathan is raised at a speed of approximately 10 meters per hour. Operating 130 meters above ground, six men from Fagioli are kept busy making sure the operation doesn't grind to a halt. They have to feed the individual cables manually onto the pulleys. Two batches of cables on either side. Powerful hydraulic cylinders lift the cables bit by bit, hold them in place while the pistons slide down again so that the next section of the cables can be lifted. The whole operation takes 10 hours. The first part of the big lift extends well into the night. Then the glitch, a minor miscalculation. It seems that when determining the length of the holding rope, the connecting shackles had not been taken into account. The expanding beam strikes the installed platform and the steel construction has to be demolished. Otherwise, the operation can't continue. The next morning, part two of the spectacular lifting event. The C3 splitter must be lifted another 10 metres and then shifted to the side before it can be lowered onto the previously prepared platform. Hours of intense concentration lie ahead, particularly in the battle against the wind, which keeps swaying the colossal structure back and forth. Then comes that tense moment that occurs every time such a large column is erected. Will the numerous holes fit over the numerous threaded rods set in concrete? Each one had been individually aligned beforehand in a labour-intensive procedure. The effort proved worthwhile. Everything fits. To begin with, the bolts hold the column in place. Only after the final alignment the following day will the C3 splitter be completely released from the gantry. The tension has already eased. Time to celebrate. Towering over everything around it, the landmark of the PDH-PP plant in Portside is in position.